gallery sits in Galashiels, which historically is a very important textile town. Galashiels is a valley, and when we arrive in Galashiels, we look out over this beautiful uh, Victorian roofscapes of hips and dormers and gables and turrets and so on. So our gallery sits within that context with um, uh, an expressive folding roofscape, which is then mirrored internally in the main gallery space with this folding origami style uh, ceiling, which sets the context for the great tapestry. It's a linear pictorial history of Scotland made in communities across Scotland by over a thousand uh, stitchers. So an extraordinary community artwork. Um, and we were, we were tasked with designing a very uh, unique and special bespoke building for that artwork. What a lot of our visitors find is it's a really relaxing space and a great environment to spend time in. It's quiet, it's a lovely environment. They can spend time learning about the Scottish history as well through that. So it's a great space for them to use. Uh, and it's been great to see visitors slowly uh, coming into the centre and making use of the space, bringing life to the building, uh, making use of the cafe area. What I'm really fond of is the fact that it, obviously there is the, the new build aspect to it, but it's also incorporated the old post office uh, section here as well and I'm, I'm a fan of you know historic buildings so it's great to incorporate this building that dates back to 1895. It's right in the heart of the town centre on Channel Street and interestingly the building line sits forward of the adjacent buildings. Our building sits out onto the street and this was quite a, a unique condition. We really wanted to take advantage of that. So as you rise up the main stairs into the gallery space there's this space that sits right out over the high street and gives you this incredible view back to the town. We were really lucky just by this kind of quirk of history when we got this uh, moment in the building. It's a great privilege for Holmes Miller to be involved in, in, in selected designing the new Meadow Bank and what we were acutely aware of was the legacy and history um, that Meadow Bank has uh, and we wanted to carry that through into the, the new Meadow Bank but also we wanted to create a facility um, that has purpose-built um, modern uh, sports areas um, for all ages and stages, so inclusivity was, was, was obviously paramount um, and creating something that um, can serve Edinburgh, Edinburgh uh, but the wider, wider community and, and the nation as a whole. I think how, how modern everything is, um, how accessible it is for customers. There's so much different sports than what I had previously. The old metal bank had quite a lot of, kind of quieter spaces and unused spaces, but in this uh, venue we've got each area has got a different sport um, and we're very inclusive. We have a bit of everything for anyone really. Yeah, well it's a true multi-sports uh, centre uh, for community right up to elite level. So we cater for football, hockey, indoor athletics, which is obviously huge here with the indoor athletics hall. Multi-purpose areas um, such as the studios, the gym, um, and as I say, all these areas have been designed with the national governing bodies of each sport. So they're absolutely purpose-built, best in class. The brief was to open up this building to try and make it as, as visible from outside as possible. So we opened, we dropped the floor down in, in the main entrance area, so we had a level access for disabled uh, people, um, but also that we could visually see down and see into the main hall and down into the lower hall of the crypt. Architecturally, it was a challenge to make this little link building between the office and the church. Um, it was very narrow, 3.6 metres wide and 10 metres tall. Basically, it houses a lift. Architecturally, that was a difficult challenge. You know, how do you have, deal with this verticality? We used a system of fins, so one bay at the bottom and then six bays in the middle and 12 bays at the top. And we had a window, slotted a window in and an overhang clad in aluminium. We worked, we collaborated with an artist who did this patterning on, on the base. Uh, the base was very important for us because it was kinked to show people where the entrance was but we also wanted it to make it feel quite robust and quite bombastic you know so that language was tying into Edinburgh's rusticated stone bases of their buildings and that language has now been used on the manifestation of the windows inside the hall it's become a bit of a motif for the building. A huge sort of change for us is the ability to welcome everyone into the building as opposed to um, only people that could get up the stairs and as well as being more open and accessible the way the space now all connects together makes it much more usable and it's a much sort of quicker flow through the building and a lot more natural it no longer feels like there are separate sections where you have to remain you can really feel the connection between all the spaces and therefore you're more inclined to connect with the other groups and people that are using the space 
the client really wanted a different type of environment for teaching. So the, it was really important that um, the furniture was not traditional, that it was um, gave the opportunity to teachers to uh, arrange the furniture in different ways, soft seating, desks, chairs, high tables, stools, so that a whole variety of environments could be played in each classroom. The idea of the traditional corridor was kind of removed and try to do the classrooms as open as possible with a flexible space in between each classroom and also to stagger them along the corridor so that a classroom faces the flexi so that it can supervise um, the other two classrooms from the one classroom. So we've now got um, free flow spaces that go straight out to the garden. We're able to have our early years and our primary one classrooms right next door to each other. So that allows us to, to have a natural transition. Open plan spaces can be quite noisy. So it was really important about the acoustic sound that for me was huge. The panelling has made such a difference and it can be displays as well as it is purposeful in terms of the sound. And then the other thing that then is important was then to make sure that even though the, the internal design was part of a model that we were applying in different contexts, that we make sure that with the response to the outside of the school, the external facade responded to the tenement and the red sandstone and we used cordon in this one. The, the flexibility of the space has been huge for us.